the Chargers and Jaguars game. Chargers, a bunch of additions on defense this past offseason, signing Sebastian Joseph Day, trading for Khalil Mack, signing J.C. Jackson with other players on defense, including Derwin James and Joey Bosa. Um, and then, obviously, we got Justin Herbert's uh, um, playoff debut. Jags, happy to be here. Won the division. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, massive step with Doug Peterson. They get Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram. Really turns this team around from a team that had back-to-back number one overall picks to now division winners. So both it's, it's going to be the premiere for both Trevor Lawrence and Justin Herbert playoff career. How do you think this game shakes out? Um, I think it's tough. But if there's one thing I know about the NFL, you always have to go with the hottest hand coming into the playoffs and getting hot at the right time. There's a huge thing in that, especially when you're a young team who doesn't know better and you've lost for a bunch of years and now you start winning. Now you believe in yourself. Now you believe you're supposed to be winning as opposed to the Chargers who have had expectations on them. We're supposed to be great. We're supposed to be challenging the Chiefs. I talked to some people who were like, yeah, I can't wait for the Chargers to be absolute world beaters this year. And I'm like, yeah, I think they'll be good, but I don't think they'll be that good. So you have high expectations coming into this game. This game's basically a coin flip. But Jags aren't supposed to be here. They started out 4-8, and eight, um, had a good start to the season, then fell off a little bit, lost their way. And then since then, past nine games, Trevor Lawrence has been 15 touchdowns to only two interceptions. So he's cleaned up the turnovers. Um, last game versus the Titans, it gave him his first taste, and he was able to get the playoff jitters out of the way. And I just feel like with Doug Peterson at the helm, no expectations whatsoever with the Jags. There's no pressure on you this year. You're not supposed to be successful and you don't know any better. It's kind of, we had Joe Burrow with the Bengals lead them in his second year to a Super Bowl. And then we have Trevor Lawrence at the four seed, similar to the Bengals. And then Chargers sneaking in the playoffs with a run at the end of the year. But I just think the Jags are the hotter team. So I like them going into this game over the Chargers, especially for me, it comes down to coaching. I feel like, the matchup between Trevor and Justin Herbert is pretty even. I like Trevor a little bit more just because he's six foot six and can fly and he has a pair of wheels on him. I've seen CJ Mosley, one of the best linebackers in the league, was on him and then he just took off and ran for the first down. And I feel like he's someone who hasn't run, hasn't used his legs too much in the regular season, but when it comes to the playoffs, picking up big first downs on third down when he has to run for it. I feel like he's going to be physical, impose himself on the football game and leave his imprint, leave everything on the field. Because when it's the playoffs, we see players like Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow go all out running the football and save a little bit for the playoffs. And I think we're going to see that with Trevor. And I do think Herbert can run, but not to the extent that Trevor can. I think they're both comparison wise are very similar because both are big, strong, fast, you know, quarterbacks. Trevor, and they're both physical too. They're both physical and they both can move. Trevor Justin Herbert, I don't think it's a lot of credit for how well he can move. Now, this game is complicated. Right now, Vegas, it's a coin flip. Who's going to win this game? And for me, we're talking about teams that are riding the hot hand. Both of these teams are going in to the game, running a hot hand. I understand what happened last week with the with the Broncos, but outside of that, the Chargers have been playing really good defense. I think week 18, I can excuse just because of being the last game of the season. Players maybe not fully invested into the game, knowing that nothing really matters. Probably should have benched their players. Brandon Stalyism, what can we say? But in this game, I think this is going to be one of the all-time best playoff games, at least for this year, because we're talking about two guys who legacy-wise are both at the same point, I think. Both people would put arguably in the top five, but maybe not quite there. It's not like set and sewn like it is with Patty, Josh, and Joe, you know? where we would put them right in there. So this means a lot. Um, Picking a team, I'm going to go with a team that has more talent on this team, which I think is the Chargers. The Chargers, Herbert and Trevor Lawrence are a toss-up, but running backs, I take Eckler over ETN. That's close, though. I feel like it's a lot closer than you give it credit for. I think Austin Eckler's top five. ETN's probably like top ten, but I take Eckler. And then receiver core, Assuming that Mike Williams plays, we got Keenan Allen and Mike Will, who I would take over any of the receivers on the Jaguars. I think as far as the task of containing offenses, I think it's easier 
with a defense who spent all this money in the offseason to contain them to go out and trying to contain Marvin Jones and Zay Jones and Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk. No disrespect to Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk's played very well this year. He's been a top 15 wide receiver statistically. However, I think the game plan for the Chargers, they have an easier task containing those guys than it would be to contain Keenan Allen, who, you know, at some points is a top 15 wide receiver. Played well down the stretch for them. Austin Eckler, I think, is the key to this game. Austin Eckler is going to run down their throats. Um, <clears throat> ultimately, like I mentioned, this is going to be a very close game. I can see this game being determined by a field goal. Really, the question really becomes is who is going to elevate their game the most? And I think, ultimately, I think it's going to be Justin Herbert. Yeah, unfortunately, when you talk about elevating your game, that also comes to the defensive side of the ball. And what I've seen so far is while the Chargers have been able to contain people, haven't really played that many dynamic offenses. I don't know who they've contained the past few weeks. Everyone was freaking out because they contain the Rams. Like, good for you guys. You contain the Titans, um, even though Derrick Henry got his in that game. But even if he gets his you could still only end up with seven points because he's one man and a running back and they have no receivers. So it's like, I don't know what receivers they're guarding, like Ben Skoranek or, uh, you know, Robert Woods. So it's like, those are the guys you're containing. But with the Jags, I will say, I've seen their defense elevate and I've seen their defense come alive and really be a driving factor for that team. And you want to talk about helping someone elevate their game. Well, who's going to elevate someone's game more than what Doug Peterson has done for Evan Ingram? You completely forgot to mention him. Evan Ingram is a complete game breaker. I don't think there's anyone on the Chargers who can match up with him. I feel like if you want to talk about Austin Eckler versus Travis Etienne, I get it. Eckler's better. Eckler's played longer. But Travis Etienne is hungry. Him and Trevor were teammates back at Clemson. And then Etienne can rip off some plays. He's a similar running back to Eckler. Yeah, he hasn't proven it as much, but I feel like he can be a dynamic player in this game, really expose the Chargers, be Trevor's reliable guy on third down. So can Evan Ingram be. And then if we're talking about Mike Williams, Mike Williams hurt his lower back last game. That's kind of tough to me to wrap around that after leaving the game, having to walk to the locker room, not even going to the blue tent, that he's going to be ready to play on a Saturday game. I get if it's Monday night football, I get if it's Sunday and he has that extra day, but he has one less game to prepare then we're talking about breaking down film what do we do better how do we elevate our game (laughs) i just have more faith in doug peterson going head to head with brandon staley who's had some of the dumbest calls i've ever seen and then brandon staley has been on his best behavior for the past weeks but don't put it past him to get a little self-indulgent and mike williams has been the difference maker. He's been the game breaker. And usually it's on a ridiculous catch where there's just no window. Justin Herbert puts it in the only spot where he can get it and just breaks the game over. But when it comes to overall talent and players breaking the game open, I see more big play, more hungry guys on the Jag side with ETN, Ingram, and then they have more playoff experience at wide receiver. Mike Williams has never been to the playoffs, but you have a veteran guy in Marvin Jones, a Super Bowl winning head coach, and Zay Jones, who has also played in the playoffs and has experience there, when and Christian we, Kirk. When did Marvin Jones play in the playoffs? With the Bengals. Oh, man. Honestly, <laughs> Marvin Jones has bounced around so many teams that I kind of forget where he's played. Remember him on the Bengals with A.J. Green? That was like so long. Like, what, 2016, 2015? Yeah. I Evan forgot Ingram's that been there with Eli Manning. He was on the boat team. Oh, yeah, I guess he was. Um, damn, first of all, how old is Marvin Jones? Marvin Jones has been <laughs> so many teams. Because I, I remember him on the Lions. Yeah. And that's it. Like, I forgot that he played on the, the Bengals. Yeah, he's on the Bengals with AJ Green, who forgot how to play football, too. <laughs> well, I think your points are valid. I still think that the difference maker in this game is going to be Austin Eckler. And I don't agree with Travis Etienne being in the same level because Eckler is a more physical guy. He's definitely, like... Size wise, sure, but I think he's a lot more bulkier and he's much more of like a can run it down your throat kind of guy. Receiving wise, I think he's a better receiver than Travis Etienne as well. I've seen Etienne multiple times this year get contained. Well, Eckler, Eckler had one of the best running back seasons of the last five years. So I think it's going to be how well can the Jaguars contain Austin Eckler because he's kind of the key to this game. Trevor and Herbert, they're both going to put it all on the line. I don't have any concerns with either of them. 
I think whoever really wins this game, whoever plays the better game, will be like elevated on the quarterback hierarchy. Yeah. Um, 